Today we get some insights from Strava about which head units people were using at the Cadell Evans People's Ride held the other day down in Geelong. I have put out tweets in the recent months listing GPS units being used across different events such as the St Kilda Super Crit and a few other local crits around the place. I have been looking at other things as well, so I've got a huge database of events that I've looked into and things that I'm comparing. Okay, what this data actually is. I'm using Strava API calls and some custom scripts because the Strava API won't give out this kind of information, so I've had to extend the functionality in the back end. And how it's done is I choose a segment on Strava, I give it a date and a time frame, and if you're on a public leaderboard for that segment, your information will be included here. So for example, if I was to do a Grand Fondo, I would take a segment or a well-ridden segment of that, or the whole route, and run my query on that, and away we go. Now, the gotcha with this, if you've got a request to follow account, but you're still on public leaderboards, you will be included. Information's public. The obvious catches with this, well, you have to have uploaded to Strava. You've got to have a GPS head unit because it's based on segments. So your activity has to have been uploaded when I run the query. And I do find around 0.15% don't have a device listed, which is interesting. I'll look further into that. Onto the Cadell Evans people ride stats. So I've got the graph up here. It may be a little small on YouTube. I will link below to my blog, which I will have all these statistics linked and the images and things so you can look closer into. But the overview here, really, really interesting. So on the event itself, it's not a Grand Fondo, it's not a race, it's a, just a people's ride. There are two options, 111 Ks and 65 Ks, kilometers. Um, so if you can do that distance, you can enter this and complete the ride and race. I believe people were given timing chips or chips to set a, set a time, but it wasn't a race. So the demographic here is your recreational cyclist and your competitive cyclist, probably more towards the rec side. So for head units used at the Cadell Evans ride, the iPhone Strava app is absolute king here on this day. It is 24% usage. The iPhone itself or the Strava app on iPhone is always a top performer, but never has it been number one. Here, it has a clear advantage there, so 24% usage. And I hope the team from Quadlock are watching this because that's their market right there. Now, the Garmin 500 series will always populate the top five. So the three units of the 500, 510, and 520 will always be somewhere in the top five for the events that I look at. Unbelievably popular in the uh, cycling market. So the Strava app on Android, 8% usage, which is quite high from all the other events that I've seen, but still falls way, way behind the iPhone. The iPhone is way out here, Android is way down there. So while everyone's saying the Android has the market share for this demographic, for the sporty people, not the case. The Garmin Edge 1000, 6.8% market share here at the Cadell Evans ride. Quite a big number actually, and but that's to be expected. Uh, they always perform pretty well at the Grand Fondo events, Audax events, but in races, no, it's not the case. The 500 series in races always wins out. The Garmin 820. Everyone knows I have a love-hate relationship with the Garmin 820. I was excited when it came out, I bought one straight away, I was super disappointed, and they've fixed things with the firmware, but it's been a bit of a journey here. 2.8% usage, that's low, that is super low. This device has been out for, what, six months or so already? Quite a small market share there. Here's my thoughts on that. At $600 Australian, there's a limiter. The 500 series is half that, or you can pick up a 500 series for between $130 and $250. So again, a 500, 510, or 520, which does most of the things the 820 will do. That added with a few issues with the touchscreen and rumblings in the market with that. But at $600, I think there's a limiter for the 820. Not that popular whatsoever. And we see that echoed in other races as well. The Forerunner 920 XT. So shout outs to all the multi-sport entrants at the Cadell's ride. The 920 and 910 dominate the GPS leaderboards in Ironman events. Now I did say I was only looking at the Cadell Evans ride stats from 2017, but let's throw up some stats here from the Ballarat Ironman. Now you can see I've compared 2016 to 2015 there as well. So there's a lot of stuff we can do with this data. But the 920 head and shoulders above the rest, but we can also see some purchasing patterns there as well. More on that in a sec. Uh, special mention to the Wahoo Element, 1.6%, you little battler. Um, might just be an Aussie thing though, that's quite a small usage. Now my commentary around the Element, it's a great alternative to a Garmin, but the pricing here in Australia, it's between $369 and $500. There's a massive spread. I'm not sure what the recommended retail is or what people should actually be paying for one. There's a bit of confusion there. Um, it's also the form factor is quite large. By the way, if the size is a worry for you, the Element Mini has been spotted on the FCC website. So keep an eye out for that. Might only just be in testing, but let's see what they do with that. 
This data is anonymized, so there's no usernames linked to the devices, but the source data is not. It wouldn't take much to create a database of usernames and devices, and then have a flag when somebody upgrades their Garmin, and then maybe send them a, hey, do you want to sell your other one secondhand cheap? Watch that, remember this is public data, but I think it's pretty cool. So looking at head unit types is only just the beginning of what we can do with this data. There's a ton of information stats we can pull out from any Strava activity, so it's not limited to bikes and head units. We can look at average heart rates, speed, pacing, power, cadence, you name it, across any event uploaded to Strava, and we can collect this data and have a look. So I'll put a link below to my blog with all these graphs and all the stats below, so feel free to carve them up any way you can, and I'll be continuing to sort of tick away in the background looking at other things we can do with this data. If you have any ideas of what we can do with it, let me know below, really interesting stuff. And the year-to-year -year comparisons are quite interesting as well. You're seeing what people are upgrading to, what they're selling off, and the number of participants in the event. Ballarat Ironman, I think you're in trouble. Okay, we'll wrap it up there for the days, but in summary, iPhone is absolute king for this kind of ride, but then the Garmin 500 series also takes the cake for everything else cycling-wise. All right, let me know below what you think we could do with this information or how I can better present it because my Excel skills aren't that great. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.